Good afternoon. Good after. Good afternoon, Alyssa. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon, Stephanie. Hello. Good afternoon, We She. Good afternoon, Catherine. Good afternoon. Oh, I, well, very well. Thank you. How do you do, Shagupta? Hello. Good afternoon, Vivian. Good afternoon, Catherine. Ooh, more. Good afternoon, or I mean, yes, good afternoon, Brenda. Good afternoon, Warda. Hello, Syed. Uh, and there's one other person coming, and I know it, it's the day that it is. Wait, what, someone else. Oh, two other people come. Okay. Oh, and I should press focus. Oh, and uh, yes, hello and good afternoon, Josephine. Okay. Hello. Are we recording? Okay. Hello. Hello. So here, uh, good afternoon, Lakshmi. Okay, okay. Um, here is the deal. Good afternoon, Jayla. All right. All right, so welcome to our last class, for good or for bad. It's gonna be sort of intense class, for good or for bad. Um, I'm gonna get right to it. I believe all of you have gotten back your, your 14 point thing. I mean, not, not everybody got all 14 points. Like if you didn't have a final answer or something, you might not have gotten it, but. And if it was late or something, but people got a ton of points. Some of you still have not gotten back your exam. I totally know that. I, I know that. And that's bad. And you eventually will, but I'm going to tell you that. But, but, but today is the last class. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to find out in a second whether you see in your Google Classroom what is more or less the final exam. Like I said before, oh, wait, okay, wait, I'm going to hold on. I'll look at the chats in a second. But, um, I just want to make clear again, and I'm going to put in Google Classroom these details. But the again, I'm saying that the I I'm going to whichever you do, whichever it turns out you did better on the midterm or this final that I just posted, I will count that a lot more. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, it is actually okay. So we're going to look at that in a second. Hold on. Okay, good questions in the chat, and maybe there might be a mess up. We're going to find out in a second if I did something electronically wrong. Maybe I did, but here's the deal. The, Four. Hold on. Okay. So I do. And here's the thing too. It's still the case that I love you guys deeply and I'm going to miss you guys deeply and all that and your hilarious group. Today, I need to be a little bit focused and a little bit serious just to make sure we all end on a clear page and to make sure, sorry, to make sure that, um, that everybody still walks away from this class today, the maximum chance of getting a maximum grade like even with all of my mistakes or my problems or whatever issues you might've had along the way, I still want to end today with everybody in this room having a strong chance to get a very strong grade, no matter what may have happened up until now. But it's, but this is in that sense, this is my last chance to make sure of that. So I'm gonna to try to be somewhat intense today. Okay, again, my goal is to set you up so that when you leave here, it's still no what may have happened up until now, you could still get like an A or an A minus or whatever, or B plus or whatever, okay? And again, it's still true that if I think there's a real problem with you, I'll let you know before anything just lands on CUNY first. If I think it's a real, real problem, you know, we'll delay things, whatever. But, but here's how it's gonna work. And we're gonna find out in a second if electronically I messed up or not. I put, a yes, like someone just asked, I put a Google Forms, thing linked to your Google Classroom. It may not be letting you open it. We'll find out in a second. That's why we're going to test right now. But the Google Forms, if you can open it, open it now. If you can't, I'll know in a minute and I'll fix it. But the finally, the Google Forms that you'll see uh, is like a mostly a multiple choice, not even multiple choice, a true false. It's like 20 true false questions or something like that. And then one thing at the end where you're supposed to draw or like free response, like put everything together in like a half a page of your own expression. But mostly it is like a series of true false questions that put together the semester and the point of the semester. We're gonna find out in a second whether you can access it or not. We're gonna make sure you can access it. The actual final exam will look remarkably similar to that, although, I mean, the order of the questions will be scrambled and some wordings, like I'll add the word not here and there so that you don't just like memorize this one's true and that one's false. Like it'll be just slightly varied. Um, 
but you'll and it'll be posted tomorrow night and you'll have till Monday to do it. So basically I'm saying right now, just to, and, and please just let me do it my way for more or less today. I'm saying your final exam is mostly just a true false thing. Be, and still you can talk to each other. You can use your notes, all of that. I hope you do. Um, and, and still, whichever you do better on that or your midterm is what I'll count more. I, I might count a lot more too. A lot. I mean, we're just going to do, you're going to, I'm giving you an opportunity to give me something good somewhere. If your midterm turned out really good, that's what's going to define you. If this turns out really good for you, that will define you. Like we're, you're just looking to give me something that's really good somewhere that, that explodes into your grade. But yes. Okay. But you do have to do both. I mean, you do have to do this no matter what, because enough, uh, some of you still don't even know what happened on your midterm. So just in case, yes, I need all of you to do this thing. Okay. But it won't, but again, if you totally, hold on. Oh, really? Oh, okay, great. Okay, that's good. Uh, and I will get to the chats all in a second, and we will see if you can open this thing all in a second. But again, the idea, everything in this class is like not meant to hurt you, i.e. let Yes, you do have to do this thing for a variety of reasons, because because I want you to like learn, have learned and all that. But if, you, if any one of you like totally trounces this final, then again, like the midterm will count more for you. If it looks like you're trouncing both, I'm going to contact you and we'll see what we can do or whatever. But like, the, you can, don't worry about this thing counting against you. If you know in your hearts or you already know for a fact that you rock the midterm, just do this thing, but don't overstress it. It won't, bring, nothing will bring you down. Everything is meant to be another way to bring you up. I promise, I promise, okay? But, but the thing with this, and if, but, but the thing with this final, which will look very much like what I just post, what you're hopefully about to be looking at if you're not already. I'm gonna tell you right now that once I stop the instructions here, I'm going to spend the rest of this period, you're going to open it. You're going to have it open in front of you. And this very last lecture, I'm going to try in English to give you the last lecture. Like I'm going to try, I mean, I'm going to use my board, but I'm going to try to put together the material so you see the point of the class, so you see the last bits of things that I want to say about the electrostatic field, mostly I'm going to be saying it in English. I mean, as opposed to like tons and tons of problem solving or whatever. And if you have this thing open in front of you while I'm talking, like that basically that true false thing is a skeleton of what I'm gonna to say today. Just like some of the statements are true and some are false. And, that, and that's, that's my script for today. Those are like my class notes, so to speak. So you just follow along in there. You can be looking for answers while I'm talking. That's totally fine, totally fine. And if it helps you pay attention, all the better. Um, furthermore, you might have noticed that our very last game turn that I posted, and I'm, and all of us are pretty much caught up on the game turns. I think, I mean, I think I've returned most of them to most of you and all that. Today's worth 15 points, not 15 exam points, but 15, you know, regular homework points as opposed to the normal five. Like just to encourage you to like really pay attention today, really bear with me. Like today, again, we have to kind of keep the jokes low and keep like the cool side questions like, oh, does this relate to black holes or whatever? This is not really the day for that. This is the day for me to just get to the end with you looking at the practice exam in front of you while I do it, okay? And I, I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna check what's going on in the chat. I'm gonna check and we're gonna see if you actually did get this link or whatever. And if not, we'll fix it right now. But then ultimately the, the real thing will be posted, I believe tomorrow night, it'll look like a Google form, just like this, just with like the questions scrambled in order and stuff like that. And you'll, you know, the one thing about Google Forms is I think that once you submit it, you can't really submit it twice. So take your time. Like you could talk to each other and all that, but like don't actually submit until you're pretty sure of all your answers and then submit it. You know, you get a grade on that. I'll count it in, I'll count it in a generous manner to help you, blah, blah, blah. And hopefully we'll all emerge from this semester having gotten the material and having gotten a good grade. And that's the goal. Again, for all of us, I don't think it's too late for any of us to do that. Um, any recognition that it's caused anxiety that you never got your, or that many of you did not, will not have gotten your midterm scores back in time to do this. I get that. I'm, I'm factoring that in to my understanding of the whole thing. Also, this is in recognition of like, we don't need a whole nother huge, anyway, whatever. Um, so um, I'm gonna check, what, what was I just gonna say? Uh, but yeah, once I like really start talking about the substance of this, even though I'm gonna try to not be too mathy, it is a little heady. Like the punchline of this whole course is conceptually a little bit sophisticated. 
I feel like the whole course has been leading to this day. I think if you stay with me and you follow this day, you'll see. And, and for those of you who have been following along, if you've been following along, I hopefully you'll see today how it just comes together. You'll know, it, you might be like, oh my God, that's the point. If you have anything like, oh, is that the whole point? Or that's what it all, oh, wait, it's that simple. If you think something suddenly like, oh, is that all he's saying? Then you probably do get it. If it sounds like today I'm saying a lot of random, weird, detailed gobbledygook, then that just means, okay, then don't, don't submit this true false thing too quickly. Go back and really look at the material. I'm trying to give you today a punch, uh, an ending chapter that actually does put together everything. It puts it all together. So once you get it, you'll see that you get it and you'll see that it's not that hard. But until you do, it might look like a lot of random weird fragments. So that's what you have a week to sit down and talk to each other and try to put together. Okay, but now let me, I'm gonna pause first. But I'm saying once I start talking about the actual physics in like seven minutes, then I am gonna like, be a little intense, like I am right now, a little intense. I'm gonna ask you just to follow. You can definitely stop me with questions if you don't understand what I'm saying or you miss something, but I would ask you to only, you know, be, I might have to cut off certain questions at certain times. And please don't ask me like, today's not the day to say like, oh, that makes me think of this other thing or, or today's probably not the best day to go back and say, I never really did understand from three weeks ago. Like that you'll sort of have to, you know what I mean? You know what I mean. All right, let me look at the chat first of all. Hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, okay, okay. So I see in the direct chat. So just, uh, uh, there's things in the direct chat. It's not a dumb question, but yeah, I'm still doing that thing where I'm gonna grade the higher of the two, but I would encourage you all, well, oh, and yes, and yes, I mean, I'm gonna more heavily count the higher of the two. And yes, that includes like, like, for example, if you got an 83 raw score on the midterm, which by the way, is a very good score on that midterm actually. And you got 12 extra points on the extra point thing. Oh, then that is a 95. Yes. Like I'm not going back on that. And yes, that means that that's like dominating your score. You could feel very good going into this final that you, oh, you're coming in with like, like a 95. I'm still saying, please still take this final. Don't just don't take it with as much stress. Don't worry about the final suddenly tanking you is what I'm saying, but do take it. Cause I, if nothing else, that's your part of the deal to make this all worth it and not just a gift. I want everybody to have learned this physics, but if you know for a fact that you already have a strong midterm score, I'm saying to everybody still take this final. Don't intentionally skip it or get a zero. That would not be wise. Take it, but don't, but don't be too stressed if you, okay. That, so that, no, it is a fun. Oh, it says no longer. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for direct chat person saying the form is not working right now. Okay, I'm going to fix that right now. That sometimes, no, that sometimes does happen. But you do have to do both regardless. Yes, you said, oh, okay. I've been, oh yeah, and please, the teacher evaluation. I hate those so much, but I'm actually on that committee. Please do the, I'm supposed to take time and have you, I mean, please do them at some point. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that, but yeah, um, wait. Um, the final, oh yeah, clarify. And I will clarify all these details in the Google Classroom. But yes, the final will be due Monday night, 11.59 PM. But I'm under the impression, correct me if I'm wrong. I think finals technically end Tuesday. Like those are the last. So I'm saying it's due Monday night, just in case there's like a, I'm saying Monday night, okay? Yeah, Monday night, 11.59. If obviously if suddenly something happens, like reach out to me personally, but, but I definitely can't accept them after Tuesday. I, Yes, it's due Monday, 11.59. Okay, wait. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand what Gabrielle, I'm not even going to acknowledge the joke Gabrielle made. I mean, it's totally, it's too fair, for, too too fair for me to acknowledge. All right, wait, let me fix the form quickly right now. Um, hang on one, bear with me. And then you'll tell me once you see the form. Hold on. But I know it, this happens all the time. Do uh oh settings. Okay. 
Oh, and uh, okay, well, hold on one second. Wait, wait, there's some. Oh, not, not exactly. Wait, what did it say? It said, it said, hold on one second, one second. Sorry, I don't know. Oh. Why? So you, okay, can I ask, all of you are saying right now, all of you are saying that you cannot access the form right now, that's what's happening right now? I know there's a thing, I know what, I used to be really used to this happening all the time, but what, you're, oh, oh, you, you, you. You're saying you, tell me in the chat, you're saying you cannot access it at all right now. Like no one can access it, no access. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, I can't, well, does create a new one do that? Wait, wait, copy and paste to do, oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay, hold on, okay. Oh, I used to, I, this used to happen all the time and I knew why and now I don't know. One second, one second. Okay, I think. Wait. Okay. We're gonna try this, hold on one sec. I'm changing the link. Bear with me for one second. Sorry, I think this will do it. Okay, tell me if this, now, now it's just should be, it's not as a quiz now, it's just the tech, the kind of what you said of just changing it to doc, try it now, please. And tell me if, it may not be a fill inable form, but it should be the contents, tell me. Let me see. If you, wait, no, really? The practice game is worth nothing. The practice game is just for, pre no, it didn't work. Wait, and you refreshed and it's a different link and you, heavens, all right, what? Hold on. No, okay, okay, I believe you. But why? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Quick question, Professor. 
Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm listening. Oh, I just realized. Uh, did you already post a midterm grade with the points on it? No, that's what I was just saying. No, some of you still have not gotten that back, unfortunately. Many people did, but many people didn't. That's that's why I'm doing this this way. I'm sorry. That that's what I, unfortunately I don't even know who's sorry. Who's, um, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Some people, and they're still coming one at a time, really uh, slowly. But sorry. Okay. Wait. I just realized what happened with this. Sorry. Okay. I made. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Once I am changing this to, I am changing this. Wait, why does it say? Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. And then you might have to tell me how to change it. I'm happy to change it to a Google Doc if that's the thing. Okay, I, I'm gonna, if someone could put in the chat how you change this to a Google Doc, I'm perfectly happy to do that. I don't know why suddenly this is becoming. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try something one more time. Then I'm going to look at if you told me how to do it. I don't know why. Oh, maybe I do know. Why. All right, I'm going to try this one more time. And it just doesn't work. Sorry. Please hit refresh or whatever on your browser and try the link one more time. I'm going to look to see if you're telling me how to make it a doc, but let me try one other thing because I think. I think I just remembered something also. No, oh my God. All right, oh wait, under response, click somewhere more. Great, oh my God. Oh, I can't believe, but, well, yeah. Well, copy and paste the link to the form. That's what I'm, oh, oh, I can try that. Okay, no, the practice, wait a minute. Okay, let me back up for a second. The practice is never due. It's if you, as soon as you finally see this link, you're just gonna have it in front of you. It's never due, it's for you, but it's really, it's basically, this is a preview of the final exam. If I could get it to you so that I can talk you through for the next hour, which is becoming shorter and shorter every minute. Um, this is not due to me. It's just, I'm trying to explain it for you to follow along what I talk about today. And then 
and to see what the final exam is going to look like before you even take it. But paste the link. I'll try to just paste. Sure, that should. Why wouldn't that work? Good point. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't see what you. All right. Okay. I have a feeling. Oh, this might have, I might have just, wait a minute. Oh, yes. Oh, I might have just done it. Wait a minute. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. I, and then I'll try it your way. But I think I know what just, I think maybe I know what just happened. It's so stupid. Luckily, well, luckily nothing. I'm glad we're recording this. This is really, okay. All right, hit refresh and try one more time, please. Everybody, sorry. And I'll, I'm gonna, if it's not working, I'll do Gabriel. No, what? You're kidding me. All right, I'm gonna look at Gabrielle's thing. I can't believe this. Uh, Gabrielle's suggestion, I mean, for how to drop, drop the ad in this one. Wait, what was, get, okay, under response, click somewhere more, create new speech, oh my God. I don't believe this. I've done this a million times in the past, but Oh, oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, I think I just did it. Try, I, okay, either try, I may have to re, uh, but try it again. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna still do one more thing, but try it again. Oh, okay, God, all right, thank you. Or at least, or at least Andrew says it's working. Thank you, Andrew, is it? Okay, I don't, that's so crazy. All right, all right, all right. So sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna start the physics now in a second. Now, luckily, it's not that I have a lot to say. It's just that it's sort of hard what I had to say, but okay, good. Now, if you're open, if you, and I might even put it on the screen myself, but hopefully you, I'm sorry about all that. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so you've got this thing in front of you. Now, don't even worry about point values or anything like that. Just like, look at the questions. Notice that all of them until the very last one are is a true false question, okay? And they are basically, right now, they're basically in the order that I'm gonna talk for the next 45 minutes. Okay, and thank you again for your patience and sorry about all of this. They're basically, I don't even know how many questions there are, but I'm not gonna add any more anything, whatever. They're basically in the order of what I'm about to say for the next 45 minutes, so you can follow along like that. When I post it tomorrow night, I'll scramble the order and you know make a little changes so that you're not just blindly, okay? But they're kind of in the order of what I'm gonna say now. I'll look at it too while I'm going, um, and they're in the order of the course or, or, or some of the, no, let me slightly correct that. Some of the things in the beginning are things. Yes. Yes. I am saying this is the format of the fine. Like your final will look 
remarkably like this. I'll change the order of the questions. I'll change some words here and there to keep you on your toes. Like I might add the word not somewhere to change it from true to false or whatever. But well, the very last question at wait, the, I will say that the very, very last question, if you scroll all the way down, does ask you to put this all together in like a half a page or so of your of a free response. OK, in the very last question, I'm going to ask you to draw your own picture, but it's like up to you to just put the concepts together with pictures or equations or words like in about a half a page. OK, and there, too, just the better you can do, it, the more you can show me, you know, what's going on, the more points I can give you. OK, and I, I won't necessarily deduct points there, but that'll be your opportunity. You'll see when we get to the end here. So so you will have to send something free response at the end. But for the most part, these are all true false questions. The early ones have to do with material from the beginning of the class that I'm not going to reiterate too much right now. But again, you'll see that what I'm trying to say in the next now 40 minutes is just going to show you how the whole class culminates in one big point. OK, so now that you all have it in front of you again, I will. I'm not trying to blow off questions. If you if there continues to be confusion about the deal here, like the, the academic logistical deal, or if there's questions conceptually about what I'm saying, I'll try to answer them as I'm going. But I'm assuming you all now have have the form in front of you. So just use that to follow along with what I'm going to try to say in summary here again. I'm, and I'm going to start talking without even the board. Well, no, I won't. Um, um, So I'm talking now. So now we're doing physics, okay? And again, this is a story. We've been hearing a story of the universe in a way for like three months now. Today is the last chapter of the story. Think of it that way. I think, yes, please. And I'll make that clear when I actually submit the actual final. I'll, yeah, I'll make it clear that you can do that. But yes, uh, sorry, I'm asking a direct track question. You'll submit the final thing, yes. Um, Okay, so I'm talking physics now. Listen to this as though, like I'm trying to make a claim here that all the ideas actually fit together. The ideas from this course fit together into a puzzle that finally falls into place today. So listen to what I'm saying that way. Like look for connections in what I'm saying or look for the fact that I'm trying to glue together the topics. OK, the most recent topic we've had is this idea of the electrostatic field or the E field due to charges, due to electrical charge, due to electrical charges. The fundamental idea is that a point of charge creates these field lines that radiate symmetrically out in all directions. Right. The field is, and this is what I'm about to say right now, is definitely one of the questions right on the sheet. The field is like a collection of information, a patterned collection of information deposited everywhere in space, telling all locations in space that something is going on somewhere else in space. In this particular example, if we had clean, empty universe with nothing in it all, and then we put a proton somewhere, if we put a positive point charge Q somewhere in space, our, our picture, our mental picture is that the positive point charge Q creates these field lines going equally out in all directions from it, getting more and more spread out as they go, indicating that there is some force waiting to happen at every point in space. And the force waiting to happen, a force waiting to be exerted on any hypothetical positive test charge of one Coulomb, anyone that might be placed anywhere in space, if we were placed somewhere, it'd be pushed out away from this positive source. It'd be pushed out in the manner indicated by those arrows, those tips. And the extent to which it would be pushed, the number of newtons that it would feel, the number of newtons per every one Coulomb of positive chest charge that would be felt anywhere in space, would be 
less and less as we got farther and farther away from the source. We could tell that by the lines because the lines get more and more spread out as we get farther and farther away. In other words, field lines indicate the magnitude and direction of force waiting to happen. They indicate direction by their orientation, their tips and tails. They indicate magnitude by their density. The closer lines are, the greater number of newtons of force, the greater the magnitude of force a test charge would experience, okay? What I'm saying so far is these lines are, these lines represent something that's in space everywhere. Some information that's falling into a pattern in space everywhere that's indicating the presence of an object in space. If there's one point in space, it sends out these lines such that if you were anywhere else in space, you would be if, if you would be sitting in these lines. They're not literally like chalk lines, but you'd be sitting in this field of information. And by tracing back the lines, you'd be like, oh, there's a point over there of charge. Like I trace back the lines. Oh God, I see, I'm in this field. I'm in this force waiting to happen because there's a charge point like over there somewhere, right? Then we said, if we, we said, okay, so, so field lines in our information in space that indicate something that's going on somewhere else in space, specifically field lines indicate the magnitude and the position of some amount of charge somewhere in space. And every bit of charge causes these field lines. But what we looked at last week is we don't, we could have complicated configurations of charge, we said last week, like we could have like, we could have like a dipole, right? We could have, in other words, like a hydrogen atom and it would create, it's not just one point of charge, it's two points of charge. And it itself is, is affecting the whole universe, all of space, and it's affecting the whole, um, all of space in a more complicated way Oops, sorry, I'm getting a little, you know, rough and ready here, but uh, then just one point of charge would indicate. We, and you can go back on Google images and look at all kinds of, like this is the field lines of a positive and a negative. If you looked at the field line picture of two positives or the field line picture of three positives or the field line picture of a line of charge, like you can get more and more complicated sources of charge that will create more and more complicated field line diagrams, more and more complicated patterns of information that's telling the rest of the world what's going on. In other words, a picture like this, if I were somewhere in this picture, somewhere in space, I would know, oh gosh, there's a dipole, there's a positive and negative somewhere causing these, these curvy lines, et cetera. What, and field lines, remember, they are all originally based on vectors, but they're not themselves vectors. Field lines can curve, they can bend, they go on infinitely. They can create very elaborate pictures, like we said, and maybe I'll, I'll even share a screen in a second. We'll go back to those pictures that we were looking at. Uh, sorry. Field, uh, I'm gonna, second. Right, we said, okay, I'm gonna just share, I'm gonna switch my screen a second. We said, right, so we said that Field line pictures can start getting very, very elaborate, like these pictures right here on your screen. Those are field lines due to different configuration. The one all the way to the left is a straight up dipole. The one in the middle is two positives. The one all the way to the right is a strong, I mean, it's like a big positive next to a little negative. But here's my big point. And I'm watching the clock, I promise you. Here's my big, these are field lines. What field lines represent information, ex raw information existing everywhere in space information in one point in space that 
indicates what's going on at some other point in space. Now look at these pictures. Here's the key, a key point. It's definitely one of the questions on the true false is that if you look at the pictures, they can start getting very elaborate for sure. They can start getting very elaborate. I'm just looking if they get even more elaborate. like this one's very elaborate here. They can get more and more elaborate, more fancy, hard to draw. But no matter what, they always have some amount of pattern, some amount of symmetry, and then some amount of complexity. Like they're never just random. They're as elaborate as they are. They're never crazy. What the field lines are, the field lines are exactly, and this is definitely a question in the true false, the field lines, the pattern of field lines is always a pattern. And it is more elaborate if the thing that's causing it is more elaborate. In fact, that's their point. They're showing space over here. What's going on over there? The, when I say what's going on, I mean the presence of charge. The, the more complicated the shape or the configuration or the situation of charge over here, the more complicated the field lines everywhere will be. That almost doesn't sound that hard when I say it that way, I hope, I think. And let me say it slightly more specifically. What I'm saying is the field lines will be exactly as asymmetric. This is the key. Again, this is one of the questions. Please follow this. The field lines will be exactly and only as asymmetric as the shape of the thing, the source that causes them. Like if nothing were in space, there'd be no field lines at all. If there was just one point in space, the field lines radiate perfectly symmetrically equally in all dimensions, all directions from that one point. The only thing asymmetric about them is that they all come from a point, the point that caused them, right? If, if for example, you had a line of charge, I don't know if I have a picture for this right here, but almost, if you had a line of charge, like a wire, but not a current, just a wire charge, a line. If you think hard about what I'm saying, I hope you would see, or think about this in a couple of days. If you had a line of charge, not a dot, but a one dimensional like, like line really long of charge, the field lines would spoke out of that line. They would radiate out in all directions except along the axis of the line themselves. In other words, a line is a long collection of points each point would radiate out in all directions, but this point here would radiate out in all directions, like left, right, up, down. Then the point directly to the left of it would do the same thing, left, right, up, down, out, in, etc. Well, the left from one dot would cancel with the right from the other dot. All the lines along the axis of the line of charge would all cancel themselves out, and you'd left with you'd be left with radial lines rating out in all directions except for that line. In other words, it would look like a centipede or something with legs flying all out of the axis, spokes. You see what I'm, so it, what am I saying again? I'm saying, and I'm watching the clock, I promise. I'm saying the field line picture is as symmetric as it can be. A field line picture is always as symmetric as it can be. Why can't it be perfectly symmetric? Because the thing that causes it might not be perfectly symmetric. Whatever way in which the thing that causes it is symmetric, it will be. Whatever way the thing that caused the field lines are asymmetric, the field lines will be. So if we put charge all over one axis of space, then the lines, the field lines will be symmetric in all the remaining lines of space. Space. I'll give you another quick example that I think will be clear too. Hold on one second, just to make this. And if you get the point I'm saying right now, I'm saying that field lines contain or convey or hold information. They do it by being asymmetric. I'm just gonna. They show the asymmetry of anything that's going, of any configuration of charge in space. Remember, if there were no charge at all, space itself would start off being perfectly symmetric. There'd be no field lines. So field lines are information. They are a difference that makes a difference. They show some difference in space. I'm going to show you one last. Oh, yeah, here we go. Like, uh, like what's the best picture? Oh, it's not a, not a great picture, but here, right here, I think 
Well, I'm, what I'm trying to say, if you look at some of these pictures, I thought I scrolled up. What I'm trying, well, some of these pictures, if you uh, are indicating what I'm saying, I guess this is the one I wanted. Like here, just a quick example, and I'll go back. Uh, the one that's here, I'm saying, if it ever comes, I'm saying if you had a plate of charge, a sheet of charge, the field lines would, would come out of the plate perpendicular to the plate. In other words, you'd have as many field lines as you can on the last remaining axis of space that wasn't take, a plate would take up two axes of space. So we would have field lines, all the field lines within the axes of the plate would cancel and the ones coming out of it perpendicular to it would be the only ones left. All right, that's not worth, okay, I'm gonna go back to the board. Oh, wait, is it about to show you what I'm saying? Okay, but all I'm saying right now, I'll, I'll go back to the other board in a second. All I'm saying right now again, is that field lines are use symmetry and asymmetry to convey to space to all points in space. Next example, I'm putting a electric oh field right. due to an infinite plane sheet okay, of charge that. density. I did not sigma. want to that was not what I was looking for. All right, all right, we're gonna go back to he's my best friend, I'm sure, but that's not. I'm going to cancel the okay. Um I'll go back to the other board in a second. Now, why am I saying all this? Because the real issue, and I'll say it one more time, field lines are information. The field is a collection of information everywhere in space. The real question now, and the, and that, and the way field lines convey the information of some amount of charge in space is that the field lines convey the asymmetry of the charge distribution by whatever asymmetry characterizes the field line pattern. Now, the real question is, what if there's a change? What if there's an update in the information? Okay, like what if, and here's the whole point for the next 25 minutes and really the point you'll start to see when you start looking at the questions. The real, our final last question is, what if you don't just have a line of charge going through, what if you don't just have a line of static charge sitting in space, but what if you have a flow? What if you have a current? What if you have a bunch of charges, not only that are in the shape of a line, but are marching along as you did in your lab, like 49,000 weeks in a row? What if we have charge flowing through space? Then we have a line of charge in space, then if you think about it, we don't just have an E-field. We have some sort of perpetually changing E-field. Like a line of charge would create a certain kind of E-field that I'm claiming would be spokes coming out of it. I'll try to get that picture up again in a second if I can without causing too much trouble. But I'm now asking, what if we don't just have a static situation? What if we have charges flowing? In, think of just one charge flying through space, then it's, it, it, at any given moment, one charge is creating field lines that radiate all out from it. But if it moves from over here to over here, then those ray, that picture of those rays would move from over here to over here, right? The whole picture would move, presumably. So they wouldn't be static rays anymore. And if that kept happening, but if there was a whole line of charges that kept flowing from here to here, somehow we would keep on changing those rays. We wouldn't just have rays coming out anymore and we wouldn't even just have spokes anymore because spokes like the centipede picture that's what we would have if charges were just sitting there in a linear formation in space but if we have a continuously updating situation if we have a flow like a river right a current of charge going like this then what the rest of space needs to know or would know is not only that we have a bunch of charge over here at this axis, at this location, but that there's a direction of flow going that way, for example. In other words, what I'm really saying is if every point of charge causes these vectors everywhere that then fall into lines and indicate where the point of charge is and how strong it is, I'm now saying, what if we had a continuous vector of charge itself in space, 
what would that do to the lines in space? And here's perhaps if you've gotten the first point I'm making, which is that the asymmetry of field lines indicates the asymmetry of a charge distribution. Here's my second slightly sophisticated point is I'm going to say now, if you really think about it, and you might have to really think about it or talk with each other or go back and forth to Google images more e efficiently than I did and check out pictures. If you think about it, if we had a flow of charge going like a long straight flow of change of charges flowing, marching along through space in a line so that not only did we have a line of charge, but it had a direction. If it was a big, long vector, then it, you, that's an asymmetric situation, but it's not a supremely complicated one, but it is an asymmetric situation. What would be the simplest, smoothest, most symmetric picture of lines that could capture that particular asymmetry? I'll tell you the answer, but I want you to hear the question before I tell you the answer. What I'm asking is basically how, how would the lines arrange themselves in space if what was causing them was not just a dot, not just a line of dots, but a flow of dots, a vector of dots? How would the lines arrange themselves? And what I'm going to say to you right now, and you can look up in Google Images while I'm talking, or you can look at the questions like in my multiple choice, in my true false while I'm talking, I'm going to claim to you that the simplest, most symmetric picture uh, that the lines could possibly fall into that would capture that, that would capture the field update or the field situation due to a current would be lines of field looping around that arrow. I am saying this one, and here I'll say it as clearly as I can a couple of times. One dot of static charge causes field lines that radiate out from it in all directions symmetrically. A dot is, is zero dimensional. It will cause lines that, that don't differ in any one dimension from any other. They'll go out in all dimensions. They'll radiate out. A positive point is a source of lines that go on forever without touching each other. But uh, that's an electric point of charge causes electric fields of radial lines. But a vector of charge, i.e. a current, a current would cause the lines to loop around it. Specifically, if my thumb were some current of charge going through, not, not just a line sitting there, but a current, the only, the most symmetric picture of lines that would tell the rest of space what's going on here with my thumb is if lines looped around the thumb, like if current were going this way, the lines would loop like that. If current were going the other way, the lines would loop like that. I'm and, the, and those loops, those circular closed paths, lines that would connect onto themselves, they would get, they would continue on forever and ever just like regular electric field lines, they get farther away from each other as we get farther away from that current. In other words, they get less dense, they get weaker. And they, and they would again be a really simple picture. I'm saying a current causes loops, closed paths of lines around it. Why? Because again, that, that's the simplest, most symmetric picture of field lines I can imagine or space can imagine that would convey not only that there's charge everywhere here, but that it's going in a particular direction. Again, you might think, why, why lines not radiate out? Because there's nothing, because if they just radiated, they spoke out, that's what they would do if there was just a line of charge with no direction at all. If space needs to know the direction, these lines have to, the lines caused by the current have to do something that indicates direction. Furthermore, last thing I'll say, I'm saying if you had a current going like this, that's not just one dot. That's a current. There is no one dot any longer to be a source or sink of straight lines. What we now have is we, we now have a line in motion causing lines causing field lines. So the field lines would loop around it. Let me summarize again what I'm saying now. I'm looking at the time, 111. Okay, I'm saying one dot of static charge causes field lines that radiate equally in all directions. One line of flowing charge known as current 
would cause field lines to loop around it in closed paths, in circular loops. And definitely, this is one of the questions, okay? Uh, again, because that's, if you really think about it, that's the simplest possible picture that could still obey everything we're saying about field lines. That's what the field lines would do if they were caused by something dynamic, something that's not just sitting there, but something that's moving with length and direction through space, i.e. a current. Okay, these lines that would loop around that current, here comes a question that's in the true false as well, are often known, I'll even tell you right now, if you're paying attention, the, uh, th th this is one of the questions in the true false, and right now it's phrased as false. I mean, the answer to it is false if you find it and hear what I'm about to say. These closed paths around a vector, around a current, these closed paths, these loops of field lines are often known as magnetic field lines. They're often known as magnetic field lines. Mag they are. They the way the question phrases it is false, I'm telling you, it's true. That whereas one point of static charge causes what we tend to call electrostatic lines, once you have a change in those electric static lines, once you have something busting through and continually updating the, the arrangement of the electric lines, once you have a flow of charge, that causes a shape that we call magnetic field lines. Okay, that's what magnetism is for what it's worth. You don't have to call it that, but that's what it is. What is it really? It's just a change in the electric field arrangement and a continuous change. Now we're at, believe it or not, we're almost, we're getting somewhere here. I'm saying now one dot causes radial lines. One vector causes loop, concentric loops around it. Current is like a change in a charge situation. Current is char a line of charge that has velocity right but as you know velocity can be constant right you can cause a current that's constant and so you you can make this current that busts through the electric field lines and makes these loops of lines and that can be the end of your story and that often is like in the lab you made currents though whether we knew it or not those little currents were generating they were making continually updated stars of field lines the sunbursts that were continually rearranging themselves into these loops. And you just had these loops of field lines in space. And you didn't do anything with them. You couldn't see them, but they were just there, these loops of field, of field lines sitting in space that you could call magnetic field lines. They were due to a constant current. But you can imagine, now if you understand what I'm saying, that busting through lines, field lines, um, in the manner of a vector rather than a point, would cause loops around that vector, you could imagine going one level higher in this concept of change. You could imagine perhaps a current that is increasing in magnitude during time. Like you could imagine in your lab making a current and like um, slowly turning the knob on your power supply so that the current gets stronger and stronger as you make it. If you did that, now, now we're kind of like at a current, like it's like current is like the derivative of charge in effect per time. You could imagine making a current that itself had a derivative. And if you did that, if you think about it, the same process would have to reiterate. Every one of those lines of field that was looping around the current, every one of those really long lines that happened to be in a closed path in a circle, if it started having an increase in magnitude in it, that's like a little field current going on now. Like it's the same idea. We're now, like the field picture is now dynamic. That field is getting stronger and stronger that's going around. It would cause a change in all the lines. It would have to update that information to space. So what would happen there? Well, if you're following me, and again, like I, this is not computationally difficult, but it might be conceptually abstract. I'm saying just like a line, a vector of charge would cause field lines to loop around it just because that's what symmetry demands. Well, then, then, an, then an increasing line, a line that got faster and faster, a current that got stronger and stronger would cause, hold on, I'm just gonna change. Sorry, yeah, would cause the loops around it. It would cause, um, the loops around it to cause loops around them. And so this is like my third point now. 
I'm saying now, if you started increasing, if you had a your current is like a change in charge per time. If you now had a current that changed in time, then it would cause loops that would themselves cause loops around them. If you really think about it, like each one of those loops would be like its own little, little flow. And around each flow, at every point in that flow, there'd be concentric, there'd be um, uh, uh, closed paths of field lines going around them. So we would now, if you had a current that changed in time, it would cause loops, which would cause loops perpendicular to the original loops. Like it would cause loop like rings that then caused rings locked with them. That could be the end of the process, could be the end of the process. If your current, and here we're now getting to another couple of the like mathy sounding questions in the thing. Uh, if your current were um, like an algebraic function of time, if your current were like linearly increasing in time, you could take the derivative and you get a constant, but then you take the derivative of that and you get zero, right? In other words, like, like linear functions, like y equals mx plus b, or in this case, i equals a t plus b or something. Linear functions have one derivative, and then you get to zero. Quadratic functions, here comes a question in the true false. Quadratic questions, like a current that is the a function of the square of time, well, it could, you could take two derivatives of it, then you'd be at zero, right? Or cubics, you could take three derivatives, and then you'd be at zero. With quadratic functions, you do eventually hit zero. That's one of the questions. You eventually hit a constant, right? So you can make a current that makes loops that make loops. But as long as your current were some kind of algebraic function of time, your loops generation would eventually stop. Let me also stop for a minute. I am watching clock. We have 12 minutes. Let me also stop and say that, that, epsilon, that when you create the electric field from a point, and you actually want to numerically compute it. Like all these lines are actually ultimately supposed to be representing actual precise forces waiting to happen, newtons per coulomb. And we can do calculations from these lines and actually get electric field strength due to a point. When we do that, we use that number K, which is really a shorthand for the number epsilon naught. The answer to that question is false. The one that has K and epsilon naught in it, like, I'm saying whenever you want to calculate numerically precisely the electric field due to a point charge, you got you can use the k number if you want, but it's but it's really a shorthand for that epsilon naught number, which I'm never saying you ever have to memorize, but I want you to be aware of its existence. The epsilon naught is a constant that oh okay, I'm I'm gonna look at the direct chat. I think there's a great question in the direct chat. I'm gonna get in one second, but I just want to spit this out before I forget. Epsilon naught, I'm saying, is a number that is needed for electric field calculations, even if you use the shorthand K, you need it. Similarly, and then I'm gonna get this direct chat question and I am watching the time. Similarly, I wanna tell you right now something I've never told you before. Once these currents cause these loops of lines, which traditionally a lot of people call magnetic field lines, the number that we use for that is not epsilon naught. It's a very similar constant. There's a similar equation for all that. The number is mu naught. It's somewhere else in the true false questions. There's a mu naught number. You don't have to memorize or anything. Just know that it's the number uh, that we use as a constant for figuring out the strength of these closed loops known as magnetic field lines. Okay, so epsilon naught goes with electric field lines as a constant, and you know the equation for that. There's a similar equation, which you don't need to know for the looping lines, the magnetic lines that uses the mu naught. You got to know that one is for one, the other is the other. I'm just going to quickly, we've got 10 minutes, let me look in the chat. Okay, okay. So look, uh, someone in direct chat just asked a really great question. Is it possible that those loops just keep going? Okay, that's like the point. First of all, the mere fact that anybody would ask that definitely shows you at least one person is definitely following and I definitely appreciate it. And yet the ultimate answer with nine minutes to go is, oh yes. If we're very careful, and that's their ultimate point, here's the point. But the answer is yes to um, great question. Here's the deal. If you create a current that is not an algebraic function of time, for example, if you create a flow of charge that is like, oh, I don't know, for example, a, a cosine function of time or, an, or a sine function or even an E function, but most commonly, and familiarly to us, a cosine function. If you make the current change in time such that, according to some function that, that doesn't have a finite number of derivatives, right? Then you can create a, a current who, who's changing and who's like, has a velocity. You can create a flow of charge that has a velocity 
and as a change in that velocity and acceleration, and as a change in that acceleration to jerk, and where the changes go on forever. And if you do that, just like the direct chat person just asked, oh yes, then what happens is if you make a flow, then that flow will create circular loops. Each circular loop is now a flow, but if the flow is changing, then it will create circular loops. And if, that and if the change makes a change, as long as you have an infinitely differentiable function describing your original electrical source, I, as long as you have a current, that is some sort of transcendental, infinitely differentiable, non-algebraic function of time, like cosines, then the change will produce a change, which produces a change. So the, a, a, a field line will produce a loop. The loop will produce a loop. The loop will produce a loop, always perpendicular to the last one. And the loops will keep producing loops and they'll, they'll go out forever in space in these loops that keep creating themselves and keep changing their orientation. Like first will be a loop like that, then a loop like that, then a loop like that, then a loop like that. And you'll have these loops of field going out in space, oscillating back and forth in their orientation. You'll have a bunch of loops and a pulsing um, geometry to those loops so you'll get field lines that'll oscillate back and forth. You'll get this huge, vast collection of oscillating field loops. And I think some of you can see where this is going. Those loops will propagate out in the manner of a wave. And in fact, the electric field will then obey the wave equation from earlier in this semester. We will literally, oh, thank you. Okay, I'm glad someone thinks that's cool. That is the point of the whole semester. That is not a side, that wasn't a side question. That is the great question. Cause what I'm saying now, and we're almost done, but we are almost done, is that literally, if you set things up right, so that the change in the electric field so that the electric field produces a change in the electric field, which technically we call a magnetic field. And then that change in the magnetic field produces a new looping electric field and on and on and on. You'll get loops and loops and loops that will pulse out, propagate out, and the E field and the V field will satisfy the wave equation. You can literally write D2 E D squared equals one over mu naught epsilon naught d2 e dx squared. I said that fast, I know, but I'm saying, you remember the old wave equation from the middle of the semester? Instead of writing in terms of y as the dependent variable, you could write in terms of e, the field. The field will propagate in the manner of a wave. And we're almost done, but this gets, and we're almost done, almost done. But this really is, this is like the, what, no, this is like why I do this for a living is just to be able to think about this and share this kind of thing with you guys because it never ceases to blow my mind that what I, and you can appreciate all of it and put it together just in English and a picture if you've been taking this course with me so far. What I'm saying now is this, the field will propagate out in the manner of a wave and will obey the wave equation. Two weird things about it, as long as what's changing it is infinitely changeable. These loops will run out of space and just leave. Like remember originally force is I push you, field is I push space, but we can create a, spa a situation now where the push just leaves the you and the I and just starts traveling through space, just like, and, and uh, uh, propagates in the manner of a wave, but two last things about waves. One, remember, from the beginning question to the beginning of the year. What is a wave generally like a sound wave? It's oscillations in a vast collection. I mean, it's, it's propagations in a vast collection of things that are oscillating. And that vast collection we usually call the medium, right? So in the case of sound, we can understand how something immaterial goes from my mouth to your ear because there's this collection of things called air molecules that are all oscillating back and forth. So we can understand how something immaterial can go from my mouth to your ears as long as there's a material medium through which it goes. What I'm saying now is when we send updates 
through the electric field, they pro those updates propagate in the manner of a wave. And I'm watching the clock. I know we have four minutes. Those updates, the new information, the changes of the changes of the changes of the information, the fact that there isn't just a chart sitting there, but a flow. And it's not just a flow. It's an accelerated flow. And it's not just an accelerated flow. It's an oscillate, blah, 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 blah. Those updates propagate through space in the manner of a wave. What is a wave? A wave is os is is pulses in a vast collection of oscillators. But what are the oscillators here? Field lines. So remember, sound waves were weird enough because they were raw information traveling through matter. The matter was air. The information was sound. Here, we have an update traveling through a medium called the electric field. The electric field was already just information. So now I'm saying, we got a new wave, our last wave of the whole semester, a wave which is, which is a propagation through a medium, but the, not only is the propagation here now an information update, but the medium itself was just a vast collection of information. So we have a ripple going through this sea of information the ripple goes out, and I know we have three minutes. The ripple goes out according to the wave equation, d2e over dt squared, I mean, e, where, where the variable now is e, the electric field, rather than y, position. So d2e dt squared equals one over, turns out to be epsilon naught times mu naught, those constants that come from fields, times d2e uh, dx squared. Remember this, with two minutes left. I'm saying, so we've got this ripple, of information update rippling through a sea of just not air, not metal, not water, but information itself. So this is an abstraction in an abstraction. Well, remember in the wave equation, the constant of proportionality in the wave equation is supposed to be the square of the propagation speed in the, in the, it's in your thing, in the true false, it says like acceleration, that's false. The constant of proportionality is the square of the speed of propagation, right? Like the constant of proportionality in a wave equation for sound is the speed of sound. Well, well, I could tell you this, this, you could do it on your calculator. The constant of proportionality here, and I have one and a half minutes, the constant of proportionality in this wave equation that describes how updates of interlocking rings travel through a field, the constant of proportionality here is one over epsilon naught, that constant, times mu naught, the other constant. If you take the square root of that and do it on your calculator, you find, as you might already be guessing if you're totally paying attention, what you get, and Maxwell found this totally to his own shock and surprise in 1881, what you get is the speed of light. This is what light is. Light is updates in the electromagnetic field. Light is the propagation of updates to the electromagnetic field, leaving the, an originally infinitely differentiable source and flowing through space in the manner of a wave. A wave is an immaterial pulse caused by a vast collection of harmonic oscillators. Usually a wave is an immaterial thing that we believe in because it ripples in a material pond. Here, what we have is an immaterial ripple in a pond of information. That is what light is. Light is how one point in space sends updates to any and all other points in space. Light is the universe talking to itself. That is it. That's what the test is. That's what, if you look, everything I just said is just summarized in those two false questions. All you got to do them. I mean, all you got to do is do them and that's a final exam. I'll take the better of the two scores and blah, blah, blah. But I hope this has been, just let it sink in and just don't submit until you talk to other colleagues and let it sink in, blah, blah, blah. But that's the point of the whole course. And you guys have been very, very, very awesome. I'm gonna go now and let you go because you have blah and I have blah, but I will miss you very much. And I will write recommendation anybody who has. Have, yes, have a great summer, all y'all. And, and I will post the details of this final in the Google class. Yes, take care, all y'all. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, I will try. I'm still, uh, they're going one by one. Every single next one I get, I post, and they're just going one by one. But yes, I'll, I'll try to do yours next, Warren, uh, direct chat person. Yes.
to be sure, you do not need to submit the practice, right? It is literally for practice for you. That's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Have a great summer. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great break. I really appreciate it. And I'm turning off the report, but awesome. Thank you. You have an amazing rest of your day too. Thank oh, you have your summer. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.